Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Hope everybody is good. Welcome back to the show. Happy Easter to all who celebrate. I'm with y'all as well, but let's dive into power rankings for these running backs, the rookie running back prospects, and there is a lot of good talent. Is there a lot of elite talent? That is to be said and to be seen, but I, I, you know, I did a lot of deliberation, a lot of conflict on this scouting and saying who is legitimately the number one running back out of this class. Some are more definitive than I am. I could literally have four different running backs anchor the number one spot here as the top five but i did uh, you know at least to make a good sound effort to suggest i feel pretty comfortable today in my top five let's talk number five will shipley running back from the clemson tigers and okay a lot of people are suggesting early on in the process that he could be the next coming of Christian McCaffrey. We're not going to go that far because I don't think it's quite there whatsoever. However, Will Shipley is a very talented running back, and some are suggesting the likes of James White. Some are saying, you know, the next Rex Burkhead. I think he's somewhere, you know, even above someone like a James White type where he can handle a decent, sizable workload, and he is very good at what he does. 5'11", 206, played in 36 contests, 526 in attempts. 2748 in yardage, a nice 5.2 and 31 TDs where he makes his money is in that receiving game as well. 85 reception, 602 and two TDs. Will Shipley, okay, right off the bat, you know, they did have the what? Uh, uh, the pro day. He didn't test at the combine and the pro day. He ran an unofficial time of 4.39 all the way at the bottom of my list there. So it is take it with a grain of salt. He didn't run at the combine. He did run at his pro day and someone suggested that he is a sub 4.4. When you look at the film, it's accelerators over burst and he doesn't necessarily have those breakaway wheels it is in question for me didn't really see it uh, more often than I wanted to there is potential that he does find ways into the open field but I got accelerators over burst as the as the top dog right now for him at this point and that's okay because two-step accelerators over the you know shot out of a cannon burst first step is definitely Will Shipley more quick than fast tape speed is good enough okay whether or not we want to say he did run a 439 and the speed is definitely there he is definitely more quick than fast Fast, and he will make moves in the open field, especially in that pass game. But running from the from the backfield is definitely not precluded in his game whatsoever, man. Good body balance and recovery off contact. He does uh, take and absorb contact extremely well. He's understanding that he puts his hand in the dirt when he is falling, and he keeps going falling forward. It is good stuff for a Will Shipley, man. I do like that a lot. Like I said, fantastic receiving ability, and he's got like the pinball break tackles you want to see out of this man. So there is, uh, you know, I will do full on uh, scattering report on a Will Shipley later on but I do like his game I think he's warranted enough that he could be a decent to big impact on anybody's roster will he ever be the lead dog in anybody's backfield that is to be seen that's why the CMC comps are a little bit ridiculous because CMC was that dog coming out of uh, college where Will Shipley may need a little bit of help injury history is definitely a concern as well for Will Shipley so number four on the board is Jonathan Brooks and like I'm saying I could easily lift this guy up to number one in my ranks also six foot 216 well put together 22 contest 238 attempts 1479 in yards a nice 6.2 on the average 16 rushing touchdowns he had added 28 receiving uh, receptions excuse me 335 and two touchdowns warranting the number four at this point but he could definitely be moving up the board I know a lot of y'all got him at number one there are some question marks that I do see in this man as well great size and frame we'll start with all the goodness Tape speed is good, okay? And I mean, you're going to sit here and say for a guy who's six foot 216, we didn't get the privilege of seeing what his 40 time is going to be, but the tape speed is good. He does pull away from defenders from time to time, and you do like to see that. Two-step accelerators as well. I don't necessarily see the full-on burst out of his uh, game also, and I think that is the common theme for a lot of these running backs coming out of this draft class, where there isn't that elite burst coming out of the backfield. Stutter step definitely aids in his patience, which is very good, adds to the assistance also in in the vision, which is very good. I do like the stutter step behind the line. It's almost Le'Veon Bell-esque when you're looking for the hole, looking for your blocks to set up, and the vision is good enough where he gets through these lines. There is issues at times where he does stutter a little too much, but I do like the vision and the patience overall for a Jonathan Brooks. He is a little bit more youthful when it comes to experience and gameplay, so you got to understand that will take a little bit of time, but he definitely showed out this past season. Very physical, tough tackle, man. He is one of these bulldozer type of running backs that if you're uh, initiating contact, 
He's definitely going to do that, but he does have that other aspect of his game where it's like Saquon. Got the power, got the speed, got the ability in the open field. I do believe Saquon is much better, obviously, but I think a Jonathan Brooks does have a poor man's ability in that respect as well. Very physical, tough tackle, wisdom, speed, ability. Contact balance supreme again. I think that's a common theme as well. When you don't have necessarily the high-end juking abilities, the speed abilities, I think you learn, especially with the body type that these guys do have over 215 pounds and six feet, contact balance is good. You're going to initiate contact, you're going to absorb contact, and you're going to keep going into the open field. Very sound stiff arm, very powerful. He is one of the more powerful backs in this draft class as well, and he will take notice, hence why a lot of people are on board with him. He did play behind guys like Roshan and a Bijan, so you got to understand why he hasn't played a whole heck of a lot. And he did suffer, unfortunately, an ACL tear back in November versus TCU. So they're saying he's on the short-term recovery. Nine months should be ready for training camp in the NFL. We will see. We know how ACLs go from time to time. So you got to take that with a grain of salt as well. Number three, bro, Blake Corum. Just finished his scouting report. Go check that one out as well. 5'8", 205, 45 contests, 675 in attempts, 37, 37 in yards, 5.5 on the average, and a whopping 58 touchdowns for my guy, Blake Corum. Am I calling him my guy? I think I am. I think he's in that category where I'm going to claim him to be my guy. 56 receptions, 411, and three touchdowns added in the receiving game. We know Blake Corum, leader of all leaders, heart of all heart. He goes back to Michigan to go win that natty with his teammates, and they did uh, succeed this past year so you gotta love the leadership capabilities right off the bat I could put that as the top uh, you know evaluator in his pros but he's got a compact frame man 5'8 isn't big uh, uh, prototypical I should say as uh, when it comes to these running backs but the compact frame you're good with man we've seen smaller running backs make it in the NFL small but very tough and strong man he put up what 21 or 27 on the bench this guy's got some upper body strength that you do love man speed is good enough 5.3 uh 5.5 4.53. I'm stuttering today. My goodness. On the 40 time. <clears throat> but the tape speed uh, definitely show, uh, translates in this respect as well. Is he going to be the breakaway elusive runner? You know, not necessarily. He does have great elusive ability, but he's not necessarily the home run breakaway threat you're looking for at the running back position. Something like a Kyron Williams is what I was saying in his scouting report, and I'm going to stick to it. I think he could have a little bit better in certain aspects of his game than Kyron does, but I mean, we saw Kyron won a run a 4-8 four, uh, four, uh, four something on the 40 time, and he's still able to, you know, dominate the NFL like he is. Like I said, Sound elusive ability, very quick feet. This is what getting people excited. These feet could be the quickest in this draft class, and that gets me excited as well. Fluidity in the game, very quick feet. You do like that ab about Blake Corum quite a bit. Pauses defenders with that lateral agility shake like I have never seen, man. It's so good. You do like that a lot about your running backs, especially if they can pause the defenders coming at him through the hole. Uh, Blake Corum does this extremely well. He will shake guys in a phone booth. It's not Shady McCoy shake, but it's definitely enough to make guys pause and wait, man. Contact balance again for this man. Extremely strong for Blake Corum, and he will take notice in a backfield. Is he a three-down back or is he a tandem back? I'm going to sit here and say he's likely more of a tandem guy, but there is potential that he can take a sizable workload from any backfield with a good offensive line. Do not sleep on a Blake Corum being a good running back in the NFL. Number two, Blake Cor or Braylon Allen, excuse me. Man, I'm slipping all over the place in this vid today, man, but 6'2", 238. And here, I'll preface this by saying I had Blake uh, Braylon Allen as my number one running back as of recently. I do like his game that much. Everyone's saying, you know, he doesn't do a lot of the things well when it comes to the agile movements, the, you know, shiftiness. It doesn't matter, man. 6'2", 238, he's an absolute battering ram. 35 contests. Statistically speaking, it speaks for itself, man. 597 in attempts, 3,494 yards, 5.9 on the average, and 35 touchdowns. Added 49 receptions for 275 and no touchdowns. So his hands are are good enough they're not necessarily great that why everyone's also dropping him down thinking he's only a bulldozing running back and I'll tell y'all to go back to guys like Kenneth Walker the third where people dropped him down because of his hands as well but we got Braylon Allen as elite size and frame his full scouting report is down here as well. Speed power combo, what you're looking for. The lesser Derrick Henry type of running back you're looking for. He is a grown ass man and he is only 19 years of age. So he's going to be growing into this body that much more. More strength, more power, and the speed is definitely there. Quick feet, short strides. And if y'all don't watch his tape, go back and watch just his feet alone. You'll see how quick he does move in the open field, how quick he does make those uh, strides and the uh, plant cuts when he is in the backfield. Great speed. He's got home run ability. 
ability. Will he get caught more often than not? Sure, because he is a big man, but he does have the breakaway ability to get into the open field and make those long TD runs. It is there. It is on film. He's done it more than once. But is it going to be consistent in the NFL when you're going up against elite level talent? Probably not. So you got to say he does have some breakaway ability, but is he going to get caught from behind? Absolutely. More than likely he will, unless there's a slower safety on his heels, man. First step explosion is definitely there for a Braylon Allen for me, especially at his size. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Shot out of a cannon for a guy that's almost 240 pounds. This is what gets him going down the field. It's no different than what Derrick Henry was with that weight and that ability. And Derrick Henry can definitely chug down the field as he gets going with those three four steps he's very difficult to bring down break tackle machine massive trucker man drop shoulder break tackle Braylon Allen's definitely going to extend on yards when he does get you one-on-one -on -one with a uh, smaller linebacker safeties or nickelbacks no question again body balance supreme I think we could talk about that for most of these running backs in this draft class number one Trey Benson and I've come around quite a bit on Trey I you know okay there is limited film you want to see more but you understand the injury to the knee and I get it as a freshman but he came back like a bat out of hell six feet 216 very well put together 31 games 1918 in yards 6.1 on the average and 24 rushing touchdowns man 33 receptions for 371 excuse me, and one touchdown receiving. Trey Benson is this good running back that we're all looking for. And what is it What is it? the biggest difference between Trey and a lot of these running backs is that speed-power combo of elite speed. He clocked at a 4.39 on the 40 time, and it definitely translates on the film. He definitely has that explosion. He definitely has the ability to take it to the house, man. Great frame. Lower body is good, man. It's a very stout lower body. Low, uh, the leg power is different definitely there when he is trying to go man one cut explosive runner absolutely freaking lutely <clears throat> he's one of these guys he finds the hole and he's gonna hit it with that great burst in the first step and he's gonna just go as fast as he possibly can it's it's a joy to watch slippery break tackle where I do think that's better to say than he is the full-on trucker even though he does have the power to him you do see some instances where the leg drive isn't necessarily what you want it to be but I mean he does have that slippery break tackle whether he's spinning around whether he's actually you know uh, a good stiff arm, you know, just sliding through tacklers. You see that quite a bit with Trey Benson, and you do appreciate and like that quite a bit. Very good plant steps. I mean, cut steps are so good, man. But like I said, he's that, uh, you know, prototypical one-cut runner. And even when he's in the open field, is he going to make you miss in juke moves and, uh, you know, a shifty, elusive ability? Probably not on the, you know, trend of saying, yes, he can do it. But you're talking those quick plant steps, and he's just going to turn direction. He's going to lean to the side as he's going full speed, and he's going to go around your would-be uh, defenders, no question, man. Great ball control. Zero fumbles lost in 31 games. I mean, that's, that's the epitome of great ball control and what you're looking for and just like I said the ACL injury as a freshman did pull him back from Oregon so when he transferred to the Seminoles it was a stroke of genius but there you go that is my top five rookie running backs as we sit today this one is more fluid than say the quarterbacks or wide receivers for me as we could see these guys jump and drop as we get closer to the NFL draft there is quality running backs but likely no elite level talent running backs but Braylon Allen is one of these guys he is my dude over even a Blake Corum I love Braylon Allen's game and I could easily put him here at number one even though a lot of y'all are going to say that's crazy because he doesn't do a lot of the things that you want to see he's just a quality running back at his size built like a Mack truck no question but nevertheless as always don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button jump in those comments give me your thoughts and we'll see you next time I am out <laughs>